The trail runs cold. If a tornado did flush a skunk ape out, there is no sign of it now. Dave and Ox retreat the way they came to collect their cast of the unidentified footprint. Well, it didn't blow the night. We still got the mold we're going to get now, which is great. There it is. For Dave and Ox, the footprint cast is important evidence that the skunk ape is drawn to tornado ravaged areas. Just brush it away. Oh, yeah, look, see, you see you the toes. See the toes. Yeah. They come right out. That's a super trap, wow. man. Well, it went really good. Obviously, we found tracks. We found evidence that skunk apes were here, attracted to the tornado site. The fact that we didn't see a skunk ape, I'm really not that disappointed. It was scary, and it was exciting at the same time. Despite the skepticism of mainstream science, Dave believes the evidence is there. And when Florida's next tornado strikes, he'll be back to try and track down the elusive creature. He is just one of the many believers, those who cross paths with disaster and are forever changed in the twisted aftermath of nature's fury. It is headed uh, due east. It's about a quarter mile to a half mile wide tornado. Oh my God! Oh, look at it! I knew the devastation of a wedge tornado. We watched it happen in Joplin, and here it's happening in my city. Coming to 98, we gotta get out of the way! I knew that it was headed for my parents' neighborhood. Is everybody okay? The hardest thing is not knowing where possible death is coming from. I started to panic. I started to cry. That's all I could think of was how lucky we were not to have the girls in the car. Somebody laying there dead was a real possibility. Call it in. It's multi vortex. Inside of, of nine years, we've had two uh, really devastating events to happen in Hattiesburg. Hurricane Katrina in 2005, the last one February the 10th, 2013. Y'all copy all that savage? Copy, on the ground. I turned on my police radio, and that's when I heard all the radio traffic about a tornado. About 20, it's a big storm from right here. It was Mardi Gras weekend, and when you're this close to New Orleans, it's a holiday. So we got the, the weekend off. I was at my parents' house about 20 minutes from town. I kind of saw the, the storm beginning. And you start seeing the local news covering what was happening west of us. Local law enforcement reported a tornado 24 miles southwest of West Hattiesburg moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. While my title now is news director, I was running the weather department at that time. We're getting reports of injuries now to Marion County. Uh, three homes damaged uh, along Mount Carmel Church Road. Once we got that damage report in Marion County, we knew we were dealing with a bad situation. I am a reporter and anchor at WDAM-TV. I was at my parents' house, and I had my nieces with me because they like to come with me to go to Mama and Papa's house. It was pretty dark at our house to be in the afternoon. So my mom changed it to the Weather Channel. Here's Hattiesburg, southeast Mississippi. I remember my mom saying, are you sure you should head out? And I just told them, like, I can make it. I'll be fine. So when I left, I felt very confident. That confidence went away quickly. Man, look at that. I just graduated from USM with a bachelor's in geography. We studied weather and climate, which I really enjoyed. That's what got me into it, actually. We have a day off from work. The warning sirens had gone off several times. And I was getting stir crazy. And that's when my cousin Hank called and, and just wanted to get out of the house. Uh, he and his girlfriend, Coralie, came and picked me up and so went to an outfitter store. It was a really strange atmosphere. The sky was kind of getting darker. In the beginning, it's bright out, and then by the end of it, it's just, it's all darkness. 
still likely a tornado on the ground in Marion County. What you have is the one that we've been tracking south of Columbia. A very serious scenario here with the storm moving into Lamar County. Well, there was four of us in the car. We do this because we like to be a part of the warning system, the assistance system. Storm is already 20 to warn, so we decided to drop south and try to find a break in the tree lines. We finally found a area that was flat, so we decided to set up and wait for the storm to approach. It's getting really dark back in there. I hear the sirens. Still couldn't see the tornado yet because it was still shrouded in low cloud cover. So it took a few minutes for it to emerge. All right, let me get the weather service on the phone. saw the actual tornado on the ground. Scott called National Weather Service, and then I called 911. We have a large multi vortex tornado on the ground. We're professional storm producers. My name's Mike Casey. We just we heading just, towards Hattiesburg. It's heading ter toward Hattiesburg. We have just visual, we have we have visual, visual confirmation of a multi vortex large wedge tornado on the ground. I personally didn't grow up here, but Paul grew up here. Seems like you turn around and he bumps into somebody he knows. Yeah, we're fixing a run here in a minute. So we had pulled off, went to the Best Buy parking lot, and then you could see this line of dark clouds, and then right below it, it was just clear. Start the car. Start the car. Let's go. Stop freaking out. I felt like we needed to get out of the way, and I was concerned about my family in, in town. When we saw the first transformer explode, that's when I realized that that was a tornado. You could see a debris cloud starting. You could start seeing shingles flying in the air, and I can't say that it was shingles or whatever it was, but you could see objects just spinning around it. we got out on the highway. I really didn't look in the rearview mirror to see how close it was. I didn't want to see how close it was. Uh, run it. Just run it. Just run it. Blow the horn and run it, Jen. Blow the horn and run it. Just run it. Blow the horn. several officers that were able to give information to other officers so they could try to get out of the path if they were headed towards the path. It's at 59 right now. 59 and Hardy is moving fast, going towards downtown. An officer said it was coming toward the interstate, so I knew that I was in a bad position. 438 I'm just up under the Lincoln Road Bridge here on 59. I'm just trying to shut it down. I can see where it's going through. 4, I sped and got as far ahead as many cars as I could. At that point, I turned my blue lights on and stopped the traffic. There was one car that I couldn't get to in time. 4-3, copy, still on I-59. Copy, the day by now, visual There were ants everywhere, everywhere, thousands of them. And the problem was too big for us, but not for Orkin. And Sarah, she's organized, she's meticulous. She's like a part of the family. 
And she could do backflips on the trampoline. Wow. Anna, did you make two identical purchases of $104 at Cut and Claw? Capital One knows life doesn't update you about your credit card. So meet Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong and helps you fix them. Another way Capital One is watching out for your money when you're not. What's in your wallet? This is nice. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Mmm. How did you make the dip so rich and creamy? Oh, it's a Philadelphia. Family recipe. Can I see it? No. Philadelphia dips. So good, you'll take all the credit. Stop fearing your alarm clock with z Pure Z's, a drug-free blend of botanicals with melatonin that supports your natural sleep cycle so you can seize the morning. z Pure Z's. If you hit rewind on the best paint jobs, you'd see that they all start the same way with Scotch Painter's Tapes. Scotch Brand has a full line of Painter's Tapes to help conquer whatever surface you're painting. The best paint jobs start with Scotch. How pure can pure be? Our 12-step process provides 100% pure quality water. Look for kids' packs from Nestle Pure Life. Fun designs and a perfect size just for your kids. This is Mia. This is Mia's pulse. With pressure rising and racing. This is also Mia's pulse that her doctor keeps in check so she can find balance. This is Mia's pulse, and now it's more stable than ever. This is what Medicare from Blue Cross Blue Shield does for Mia. And with over 80 years of healthcare expertise, imagine what we can do for you. This is the benefit of Blue. Within our worst natural disasters are unseen stories of survival. New episodes of Heroes and Survivors Defying Death, Sunday nights at 9, here on the Weather Channel. At that point, I didn't know how big the tornado was. I didn't know how wide it was. I didn't know the path it was taking. I parked diagonally in the road and stopped the traffic. Probably one of the hardest things you'll ever do is sit there waiting and not knowing where possible death is coming from. 307, it's coming um, over Henshaw Court General. I could see the bridge at the next intersection of Hardy Street. The clouds got darker, then all of a sudden, I couldn't see it. It looked like the cloud had actually just dropped down in between me and the overpass. You could hear the wind blowing, and they say it sounds like a freight train, and it's a lot worse. There was one car that I couldn't get to in time, and uh, I actually drove up, not knowing if they were all safe. That was terrifying. Okay, so storm chasers are reporting a tornado on the ground in northern Lamar County. Large wedge tornado being reported on the ground in northern We had Lamar already County. had confirmation from a storm chaser. He actually relayed that to the National Weather Service into the chat, and they quickly relayed it to us. All right, this is uh, one of the worst case scenarios that we can possibly have. Uh, I've been here for about 10 years, and it's the first time we've really had what we would describe as a wedge tornado uh, on track uh, towards a major metropolitan area. My voice cracks when I say that. I knew the devastation of a wedge tornado. We watched it happen in Joplin. We watched it happen in Tuscaloosa. And here it's happening to my city, and uh, it's tough. It is huge. It is a big tornado. We were probably five miles outside of town. Still could not really get any visuals on the tornado. As soon as we crossed the Hattiesburg city limit is when we saw the tornado coming in, and our heart stopped, because we could see one end of it and we couldn't see the other. All right, open my, open my sunroof. Stop right here, stop right here, right here. We were still on the line with National Weather Service and 911 that they would get the sirens turned on. There are no sirens going off. Yeah, we're sitting on, yeah, we're sitting right here. There's no sirens going off. It may be larger, it may be larger. 
we got out the car, you know, and kind of started yelling for people that were around. Oh, it's bad. It's coming over. It's coming to 98. We got to get out of the way. You can tell the cars that are driving next to us have no idea what's going on. King First and thing. Old Highway. What? King and Old Highway. King and Old Highway. Large multi vortex a quarter mile wide. First thing I thought, and there's gonna be a lot of injuries, and this isn't good. Stop, here, Bill. Stop, Stop right here. No, so we need to, we need to get out there and just start helping people as quick as we can. Large tornado on the ground. Going into Hattiesburg. All right, here we're gonna go forward past the ambulance. Ma'am, I need to go. I started getting text messages and calls from my sister. And she was like, I don't know what you need to do. She was like, I don't know if you need to keep going or turn around. So I got off the phone with her, and I called um, my coworker, Vanessa Pacheco, at work. And I just told her, I need to speak to the weather chief. I need to speak to Nick. She told me that Nick couldn't speak to me right now, but she would try to get the message to him. So I kept driving. Luckily, my nieces were not awake. And I just remember thinking, thank God they're asleep, because I started to panic. I started to cry. It was so incredibly dark. And it was just this eerie quiet that I've never heard before. Throughout the course of my career as a photographer, I've probably covered seven or eight different tornadoes. But as far as actually being close to one or it actually hitting that close to home, this was the first. I was working at the Hattiesburg American. I was a staff photographer. So it took off to head into Hattiesburg. In the distance, I was able to see the actual storm running parallel. When it crossed Highway 589, I knew that it was headed for my parents' and my grandparents' neighborhood. I was exceptionally worried about them. I uh, never strayed away from focusing to try to get into Hattiesburg, but at the time, I was still continuing to touch base with them on the phone just to see how they were. Go ahead. I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit. OK. That is, that's a tornado. We pulled out of the parking lot, and I saw this giant destructive finger that was just tearing things apart. Whoa! I was just really excited at first, you know, that I was looking at this tornado. Oh. There was a nice gentleman that he was in a white truck, and he kind of ran defense for us as we pulled out in the intersection because some people realized there was a tornado and other people didn't. So we were able to pull left, and I realized it was barreling down on us and it was coming our way. Our oldest is Rebecca. We had dropped off Becca at church. I was more worried about my parents than I really was of, of my daughter. I know that sounds awful, but seeing the way the storm was heading, I knew that it wasn't going to go that way. Paul called his parents, and the phone lines were down at their house. We went to try to go to Paul's parents' house. The way that the storm was coming, it looked like it was going to head straight on top of their house. Keep going straight. Keep going straight. Somebody else had stopped. It was a man, his wife, and three kids in a SUV. And it had been picked up, flipped about three times in the air, in the air, and landed in a ditch. A lot of things going through my mind at the time. I didn't know if anybody was killed, seriously injured. Hey, James, tell us how bad it is. If they need to start helping them out down there, I can. I'm not close to go through.
currently in our area, 76 degrees under fair skies. Overnight, some clouds. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Low, 72. Winds light and variable. Wednesday, scattered showers or thunderstorms. High, 86. Chance of rain, 60%. Wednesday night, partly cloudy with a slight chance of thunderstorms. Low, 71. Chance of rain, 30%. Here's our seven day outlook. And Doug. Look, Limu, a civilian buying a new car. Let's go. Limu's right. Liberty Mutual could save you money by customizing your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Oh, yeah, I've been a customer for years. Huh. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Buy one, take one is back, starting at just $12.99 at Olive Garden. Join us for a new favorite today. Then bring one home for tomorrow on us. Buy one, take one. For a limited time, only at Olive Garden. With all-day comfort for all-day fun, Depend FitFlex underwear features maximum absorbency, ultra-soft fabric, and new beautiful designs for your best comfort and protection guaranteed. Life's better when you're in it. Be there with Depend. All eyes on me. Cold lagered. Cold filtered. And cold packaged. For peak refreshment. The world's most refreshing beer, Coors Light. Let's be honest. You need insurance, but it's not really something you want to buy. It's not sexy. Oh, delicious. Or delicious. Or fun. But since you need both car and home insurance, why not bundle them with e-surance and save up to 10%? which you can spend on things you really want to buy, like, uh, well, I don't know what you'd want to buy because I'm just a guy on your TV. <laughs> Insurance, it's surprisingly painless. Amazing is outside in Illinois. It's getting lost in the woods and you're in a canoe. It's a sunset so striking, you don't even try to take a picture. It's hearing the waterfall before you see it. It's a view closer than you think and better than you thought. Amazing isn't just a place you take yourself. It's where that place takes you. Find yours at enjoyillinois.com. Tap to 231-231. Now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea. That's P-E-P -E -P to 231-231. There's a man, his wife, and three kids in a SUV. Somebody else had stopped. The family was in the truck with them, and when I got out, the driver and his wife got out of the car. They came back, told me what happened, and I made sure they were all safe. I put the kids and the wife in my patrol car. They were scared, they were crying. I let them know that back in my patrol car at that point was probably the safest place they could be. We believe that because Sergeant Brulian blocked the interstate with his patrol car to keep traffic from driving into it, he was able to save some lives. Uh, this is going to be crossing over eventually Highway 49. We're talking about right near USM is where this tornado is headed towards. Look at that. Look at all that damage. We realized 
oh my God, it's, it's headed straight down Hardy Street. And you immediately start calling friends that lived on campus in the dorms or in the fraternity houses and making sure that everybody is okay. Hardy Street is, you know, the busiest street in Hattiesburg. And Dude, that's insane. That's your initial thought is how many people that could be on that road, potentially. Keep going. Keep going. Slow it down a little bit now. The tornado was moving east. We were letting it stay in front of us because it gives us options to get out of the way if we need to. I was filming outside the window, and I could literally hear the structures breaking. I'd never heard anything like it in my life. It was like someone had just put a bunch of metal inside of a dryer and turned it on. I got really nervous because I realized it was moving really fast. The traffic was just crazy. People were running red lights, and I kept screaming, it's right behind us. I think I was scaring my cousin because he couldn't see it, and he was trying to weave through traffic. The entire funnel dissipated from the ground up, and for a moment, there was all of this debris just hanging in the sky. Yeah, you can go right. I was watching pieces of people's lives kind of rain down. And I thought that at that point, the tornado had died. Go, go, go. And then took a right and basically did everything you shouldn't do in a tornado. We turned into the path of it. Oh my gosh, it's right there. The tornado began to move slightly more to the north. I had a feeling that eventually that tornado would meet up with the road that we were on. I've never heard it like that. It's huge. Gosh, it just hit something. Continue, forward, forward. It was a red truck in front of me that had stopped, and there was another vehicle on the side of me, so I couldn't get around. So I just grabbed the steering wheel with both hands, braced myself, Paul sheltered me on my right side. You could hear debris hitting the car. The car was swaying back and forth, and, uh, then you heard just crazy wind, and it was done. And when I looked up, there was a two by four through the back glass of the car. We have two girls, and if either one of them would have been in the back seat, they would have both been severely hurt. Becca would have had glass all in her, in her head. And uh, Maya would have had a two by four in her head. And so when I saw that, I mean, it was over for me because that's all I could think of was how lucky we were not to have the girls in the car. So Paul took over driving. And um, all he could think about was his parents. There was a stretch of trees and just kind of lost it behind that when we come out on the other side of those trees, what was in the distance at first was right on top of us. <laughs> Creating the perfect night just takes a little creativity. The light beer you've been waiting for has arrived. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. Corona Premier. New Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline has four levels of defense against gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. And that helps keep your engine running like new. It's fuel for thought. I can't believe it. That car brought his karaoke machine? No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Go, Kevin! Go, Kevin! No, no. Believe it, GEICO could save you 15% or more on car insurance. So now, Dish has over 80,000 on-demand movies and shows. 80,000. Why? I mean, 
it would take you years to get through 80,000. Thing is, it's not about 80,000. It's about one. That one movie you saw that one time on a first date with that one girl. That's why. Dish, tuned in to you. 12 grams of protein equals good vibes rising. Kashi Go. Do more of what you love. Your brain is an amazing thing. But as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Not even our competitor's best battery can match the power of Energizer because Energizer Ultimate Lithium is the longest lasting AA battery in the world. Energizer, backed by science, matched by no one. Today's Best Best starting. What does that mean? With rewards points that never expire, you get free nights fast. Now get a $20 Best Western gift card after your first day. Book now at bestwestern.com. Now's the time to find your color and everything to get started during red, white, and blue savings. Get a colorful new experience and get $10 off one-gallon cans and $40 off three- and five-gallon buckets of paint and stain for a limited time. At the Home Depot, more saving, more doing. It's a big storm from right here at 38 and 4. We were hit with the leading edge of it. It was shaking the car, and you could see stuff flying around outside. I mean, it was just insane wind. It was just loud, and there was just a, a roar. I never felt like I'm about to die. I probably should have felt like that because we were that close to it. But afterwards, of course, you know, you, you start to wonder, like, you know, in all of that destruction was, did someone lose a life? People are hurt. We need a render aid. We need to stop a render aid now. It's over. Watch out for power lines. Oh, my gosh, there's people injured. When we got to the point to where the tornado had crossed in front of us, we couldn't go anymore. And at that point, we knew we needed to go into search and rescue modes. We almost ran into power lines that were right at head level that you just don't see because there's so much damage down there. First, there was this heavily damaged pickup truck in front of us, and we thought someone was going to be in it. It looked like the truck had flipped over and landed upright again. And we saw a guy walking away. He's got blood on him and stuff. We could see massive damage. We could see big brick walls laying down. You don't know if people are under them. You're not sure where to go or where to stop. So you just look for the area that looks like the most severely damaged and where people could have been, and you go there. Anybody in there? Anybody in there? We missed the front of the Oak Tree House. The whole front is missing off of the Oak Tree House. Uh, we got major damage on the front. Uh, I'm gonna get out here at the Fourth Street and. It's right there in the middle of campus. I could see this huge funnel cloud that had just gone just to the south of the football stadium. And I watched it then track on to the east and eventually into the neighborhoods. Get on the people first. Uh, first priority is going to be resident halls and um, anywhere uh, where people are living. And I turned around my patrol unit and went back 
and started on the east side of campus there checking some dorms. There was five residence halls in the vicinity. We know there's still people here on campus. And to know that somebody being somewhere and laying there dead was a real possibility. That was what you were hoping not to see. That's see it. it right there, the tornado on the camera. Yep, um, that's it. And you just saw a transformer explode, they, so that's we have, it. We have power flashes there. That is a large tornado on the ground. We have several cameras scattered through the area, and we had already told people this is a tornado that could be three quarters of a mile wide, but I don't think people actually believed it until they saw it with their own eyes. This is not something to play around with. You need to be taking your tornado precautions right we did actually lose power. The generator did kick on. That takes about 15 seconds. So we, we just saw that flash right when we threw this on the screen there, and that's what happens when you have a tornado hitting a transformer. Another surge came through and knocked us off. That was an unfortunate time to be down because the tornado was moving towards the city of the pedal. I kept driving and praying to God, like, please let me be making the right decision, because I had those two girls with me. I heard back from Nick, and he just told me to stop wherever you are, like, get somewhere. And so I ended up stopping by this grocery store, and I went inside with the two girls, and I was, I was just shaking. I believe that Nick telling me to stop saved our lives. I never went into detail about what happened that day especially not with Nick. So I don't think he knows at all. I don't think I ever told him. first came into our site, it was over our recreational complex with our softball fields off of the city. Uh, it lost a lot of color, I guess you would say. In the Girl Scout building. I got my video camera down here. Is everybody okay? My phone rang, and it was my dad. And he'd actually told me that it did cross over my grandparents' house and their house. My grandparents' house received some pretty good damage, uh, along with my parents' house also received some damage. But no one in my family was injured. I left my car at 34th and Hardy, got out, started roaming around, taking photos, search and rescue efforts for different stuff like that, and as well as the fire department. You stop and you kind of think, you know, is everybody OK, or did anybody die? To see it go through your town and put people's lives in danger that you know in your own hometown, it's sort of a different feeling other than just a normal event that you cover. I really wasn't prepared to see that amount of damage and take in that amount of people's emotions. Couldn't tell really where we were because we weren't familiar with Hattiesburg. We thought that it would look like a hospital district or something. Is anybody injured? 
Is there any injuries over here? Oh my God. And as we came, came through some of the damage, we looked up and we could see the sign for the University of Southern Mississippi. I was very nervous about what we might see. It's terrible. We're in Hattiesburg. It's terrible. They just got destroyed. It's terrible. We're on the whole way. Don't worry about it. If you hit rewind on the best paint jobs, you'd see that they all start the same way, with Scotch painter's tapes. Scotch brand has a full line of painter's tapes to help conquer whatever surface you're painting. The best paint jobs start with Scotch. I'm looking at that truck. Wow. That's awesome. This 4th of July, celebrate in a new Chevrolet. Oh, wow. They're all really cool cars. Woo, I love it. I can't stop staring at it. Spectacular deals are on display now at your local Chevy dealer. Wow. Well, it's time to upgrade. Get 20% below MSRP on all 2019 Silverado double cab pickups. That's over $97.50 on this Silverado. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Okay, I'll admit, I didn't keep my place as clean as I would like, because I'm way too busy. Who's got the time to chase around dirt, dust, and hair? So now, I use heavy-duty Swiffer Sweeper and Dusters. For hard-to-reach places, Duster makes it easy to clean. It captures dust in one swipe. Ha! Gotcha. And Sweeper Heavy-Duty Gloss lock away twice as much dirt and dust. It gets stuck deep in the grooves other tools can miss. You know what? My place is a lot cleaner now. Stop cleaning. Start Swiffering. You try hard. You eat right, mostly. You make time when you can. But sometimes life gets in the way, and that stubborn fat just won't go away. Cool Sculpting takes you further. A non-surgical treatment that targets, freezes, and eliminates treated fat cells for good. Discuss Cool Sculpting with your doctor. Some common side effects include temporary numbness, discomfort, and swelling. Don't imagine results. See them. Cool Sculpting. Take yourself further. At Domino's, delivery is kind of our thing. We even made a car for it. So when you get pizza, stuffed cheesy bread, or any of the other mix-and-match items delivered for just $5.99 each, you can trust we'll do our thing to get you your things. Because we know a thing or two about delivery at Domino's. I switched to Marilax for my constipation. Stimulant laxatives forcefully stimulate the nerves in your colon. Marilax works with the water in your body to unblock your system naturally. And it doesn't cause bloating, cramping, gas, or a sudden urgency. Marilax. Look for the pink app. How pure can pure be? Our 12-step process provides 100% pure quality water. Look for kids from Nestle Pure Life. Fun designs and a perfect size just for your kids. One knows life doesn't update you about your credit card. So meet Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong and helps you fix them. Another way Capital One is watching out for your money when you're not. What's in your wallet? It's time to ready the planes. Ready to go? Okay, hey, prep the crew. All clear here. And get down to business. Okay, Are we loading the passengers? Because for these Arctic aviators, we have a take -off, we have a wicked four. weather. They're saying it's the coldest winter in 22 years. Antique aircraft. Are we flying in this thing seriously? And treacherous trips. Oh, well, well. Are just a part of the job. The ice pilots are back on the Weather Channel. New episodes Sunday nights at 8. I knew there was going to be people that had died. How many, I didn't know. We were hoping it would be low. Watch out for the line. All the emergency responders were all ready to go. It was very impressive how quickly uh, they were out there. I made my way checking for any victims that came across a uh, young lady from the University of Alabama. 
she was sitting in her car, terrified, because she had just rode out the tornado. She had a cat and a hedgehog with her. And so we grabbed the cat, grabbed the hedgehog, and I went and took her inside of a girl's dorm and told them to take care of her, give her any assistance that she needed. One of the on-campus residence halls was hit by the storm. So it didn't completely collapse it, but it blew out a lot of the windows and knocked off good chunks of it. Luckily for us, uh, no deaths were reported uh, from our campus. But at the time, we didn't know about the rest of the city of Hattiesburg. I took over driving, and I raced over to my mom and dad's house. I knew my dad had a weather radio in the house. Dad takes his weather seriously. They were safe. They were OK. I remember we were in my parents' driveway after all this happened. Dad was helping me tape up the back glass. And I remember seeing in the sky, you could still see just an angry sky. It looked like another storm was heading our way. He said there's a gas leak and a fire. Oh, look at that church, man. It's like everything is. Look, look at that. The telephone pole. That is where we crossed in front of it, right there. We went back onto Hardy Street, I mean, immediately after it had happened. And it was just a, a, a swath of land that was just chewed up. There was just destruction and people wandering around in it. Look at that. It was so dark, and you couldn't see all the electricity was out. I was just awestruck at the the power of of this thing, at the wind. You know, this was just wind. This is what we were out running. Look down there. Hank, look what happened. This is what, it was right behind us. It kind of hit us all of a sudden, like, we've got animals at home, like, have our homes been destroyed? We first went to Hank and Coralie's house. It was fine. My house, it's fine. But the drive home is where we started seeing a lot of destruction. Can I, yeah. We started going through the neighborhoods on foot with the assistance of the fire department, checking for anyone injured. Some houses, there was nothing left but a slab. And, you know, they, they would wonder if the people were injured or anything like that. Uh, copy. We're just a little bit past uh, E7th Street. That's the street we had officers going into houses that, when they came out, found out that they had natural gas lines going to them and they were leaking. We had officers that were getting sick on the side of the road. And as soon as they got through being sick, they were back in the houses looking again. Okay. Even with headlights, it was so dark, you couldn't see anything. Blackness is a whole complete different kind of blackness when the power's out pitch black and it's pouring down rain. There were power lines everywhere. People lost everything. There were people that were crying, sitting on bricks and pieces left of their foundation. People going through china cabinets, people standing on umbrellas in the pouring down rain, pulling out things that were left from their closet. No roofs on their home, no walls standing. You see people countless time and time again crying, hugging one another, telling the story of how they did survive. It does take a toll on you. Now, all these numbers that you hear out here today, so there's 200 homes or 3,500 or 4,000 houses without power. You can imagine those numbers will go up. They are going to go up. The number we don't want to go up are fatalities. That number is at zero. We want it to remain at zero. We were really blessed. At that point, we still didn't have one fatality uh, in, in this event. But we were aware that there was a possibility 
I'm standing here in Mr. Jerry Lewis's what used to be his garage. As you can see, there is debris everywhere. The tornado came right through here. Mr. Lewis's family, they were looking out the window and they were watching a woman hanging on to that pole right there. She was holding on to that for her dear life. Now, obviously, he... We heard story run. after story after story about people in one room and for whatever reason move into the next room when a tree falls in the room they move from. One home in particular, an elderly lady was still in the home. She had some things stored in some big plastic crates. She was in the living room when the storm came through. It lifted her home up enough, basically moved it about 50 to 75 feet. She hit the floor, and those boxes came over between her and a corner of their house. And that room was pretty much the only thing that was not destroyed on that home. The tornado had hit Oak Grove High School. I had no idea on a Sunday that there was anyone there. But it turns out there was a team there at the time. The team actually ran into the bathroom and the gymnasium. Fortunately, there was no one in their field house. You had a lot of damage there. But I met the sweetest man, and I remember him telling me his story. His wife was bedridden at the time, and he told me that he put a mattress over her, and he got himself on top of the mattress. He said the roof fell on him, and by the time it was all over, the entire house was gone, but they didn't have a scratch on them. We waited to find out if there were any fatalities and not knowing what the results going to be. I've been on the end of waiting for a baby to be born, and it's that anxious moment to make sure the baby is fine. It's almost just that same kind of feeling and that, that sadness if you find someone who had been, uh, who had lost their life. We did have damage in the county. Uh, we had some significant damage to homes and structures. We do have uh, power outages still. Uh, we have about 43, 4,800 customers that are without power. We had already started our way back to Jackson. We started getting radio, uh, reports on the radio that there's a bunch of injuries. We thought for certain there were deaths from that tornado. I thought for sure. We know that uh, 63 individuals were transported to the two local hospitals. Um, and uh, they were uh, treated there. And Doug. Mm, exactly. Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance, yeah. so you only pay for what you need. Nice. But uh, what's up with your partner? Oh. <laughs> we just spend all day telling everyone how we customize car insurance because no two people are alike, so. Limu gets a little confused when he sees another bird that looks exactly like him. He'll figure it out. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. COPD makes it hard to breathe. So to breathe better, I started with Onoro. Go your own way. COPD tries to say, go this way. I say, I'll go my own way with Onoro. Go your own way. Once daily Onoro contains two medicines called bronchodilators that work together to significantly improve lung function all day and all night. Onoro is not for asthma. It contains a type of medicine that increases risk of death in people with asthma. The risk is unknown in COPD. Onoro won't replace rescue inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be used more than once a day. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition, high blood pressure, glaucoma, prostate, bladder, or urinary problems. These may worsen with Onoro. Call your doctor if you have worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain while taking Onoro. Ask your doctor about once daily Onoro to start treating your COPD. PD. Save at Onoro.com. If you have moderate to severe psoriasis, little things can be a big deal. That's why there's Otesla. Otesla is not a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. With Otesla, 75% clearer skin is achievable. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Ready to treat differently with a pill? Otesla, show more of you. Every now and then I get a little bit thirsty for a Jose Key.
make your summer jams even hotter. With Dos Equis, keep it interessante. Ready to go? For these Arctic aviators. Okay, here we go. Wicked weather. They're saying it's the coldest winter in 22 years. Antique aircraft. Are we flying in this thing, seriously? And treachery. The world of business is constantly evolving and reinventing itself. Gigabit Plus Fiber Solutions from Mediacom Business is built to stay ahead of that curve. Our recent $1 billion broadband network investment has fueled untethered speeds of up to 10 gigabit and beyond, providing a gateway to innovative new applications and technologies. Harness the ability to attract more customers and truly grow so your business will be ready for what comes next. Gigabit Plus Fiber Solutions from Mediacom Business. Amazing is outside in Illinois. It's getting lost in the woods, and you're in a canoe. It's a sunset so striking, you don't even try to take a picture. It's hearing the waterfall before you see it. It's a view closer than you think. And better than you thought. Amazing isn't just a place you take yourself. It's where that place takes you. Find yours at enjoyillinois.com. Even beats her insurance price. Good for you, Kate. Good for you. Good RX. Stop paying too much for your prescriptions. Download the free app today. The state of emergency still exists. And so we would ask you to be careful on a number of levels. We have flooding in low lying areas. We know that uh, 63 individuals were transported to the two local hospitals. Um, and uh, they were uh, uh, treated there with minor injuries. We started getting reports on the radio that there's just a bunch of injuries. As the governor said, we've got more than 60 injuries that are reported. I know fatalities, we're thankful for that. I've always said if we can get through these storms without any deaths and all we have to do is to clean up the mess, it would be wonderful. Continue to pray for those and think about those that had injuries. When we found out no one had died, we were, were shocked. We, we could not believe that what we watched and saw that there were no deaths. The maximum width of the tornado was around three quarters of a mile wide, and the path length that went through Lamar County and the Forest County was right over 21 miles. The wind speeds was about 160 miles per hour. The National Weather Service determined from their survey that this was an EF4 tornado. If it were running on a path just a quarter of a mile, half mile to the north, it would have wiped out almost every business in the city of Hattiesburg. If there's any silver lining, it's the fact that remarkably there were no deaths. When you just look at the statistics and you look at an EF4 tornado hitting a populated area, I don't know why we were spared. If it had been a work day, because of the path that the tornado took, it was going down one of the busiest streets, which is usually packed at 5 o'clock. Had this happened on that day, I believe that injuries that would have been sustained, even the cost of life, would have been dramatically increased. To have no loss of life is nothing but truly a miracle. We were really blessed in that a lot of our student population had left and gone to Mardi Gras. The 6 o'clock church services had not occurred. Those kind of events actually helped us. Just very thankful that no one was seriously injured. My explanation for that is the good Lord was watching out for the city of Hattiesburg and all of its citizens. We started a Facebook group. I created the group about 7 o'clock Sunday night. By the end of the night, we had several hundred followers, and it kind of took off from there. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. This is an overwhelming response. By Wednesday morning, the day of the cleanup itself, we met on campus with over a 1,000 uh, volunteers. To see that many people that passionate and that endowed to the university, and it was, it was just a tremendous moment for all of us, I think. It's been overwhelming almost. At, at 20 years old, I never thought I, this would anything like this would ever happen. So it's just a statement of the community and family that we have here, and I'm really proud of it. USM came back and USM has come back stronger than before. The restoration process has been nonstop ever since. There are new memories to be made. My daughter, she'll never know what campus was like before. She won't have any idea. But now I'm able to show her a new campus and a new progress and a new Hattiesburg.
The rebuilding process hasn't been easy for a lot of people, but Hattiesburg is making it. Hattiesburg is coming back. People around here are tough. They started rebuilding and picking up the pieces right away. I'm proud of the people of Mississippi, how they, how they bounce back from disasters. I think it helped some of the cities, you know, Hattiesburg and Petal, especially with the downtown revitalization. And the tornado touched some of those areas in town. And as a result, it has helped a lot of the community and it's helped a lot of the neighborhoods revitalize itself. I don't think that the tornado will ever be a defining factor or defining item in the history of Hattiesburg. So I think it'll be the spirit, the resilience, and the ability to overcome that our community showed following the storm. That will be the defining piece in our history.